Hey everybody, Al Marnowski here with a lesson for Acoustic Guitar Magazine. Today we are looking at Courtney Hartman's rendition of the song Cumberland Gap. Uh, this is a, an old time fiddle tune uh, that's in three parts. You should go check out Courtney Hartman's version if you haven't heard it already because it is a fantastic solo guitar recording. It's, it's really lovely. And today we are going to be looking at an arrangement of that. Um, she plays through the tune three different times and the further she goes the more she starts to improvise. This version here is um, based off that first version that she uses in her recording. Um, that first pass through the tune. So definitely go check out her version if you haven't already. Um, also, if you are just finding this through YouTube, you should go find the um, the write-up and the tab at Acoustic Guitar. You can find it at the website, it's acousticguitar.com. There should be a link below this video. Um, so you can find the text that gives some more background information and, is, and also has all the tab for this as well. So you'll be all set with that. Um, there are two things I'd like to talk about with this tune. Um, I will just play through it real quickly, but as I do, I want you to, to notice these two things. One are chord shapes that are being used in the left hand. Um, so even though the, this is kind of like a solo guitar arrangement, it, it is based off these kind of bigger open chord voicings like C and F and G. So I'll go through those uh, in a second, but watch for those chord shapes. Also listen for notes ringing out um, throughout the tune, kind of open strings ringing, also fretted strings ringing um, as other notes continue to be played. So listen uh, for that and watch for these chord shapes. Anyway, here we go. This is the arrangement as it appears in Acoustic Guitar Magazine. I'll play it through now. I'll also play it through at the end of the video much, much slower. All right, so here we go. <laughs> So there's the tune, um, and I'd like to talk about these chord shapes. What I'll do is uh, talk about each of these shapes and then give examples um, of how these are used in the arrangement itself. So the chord shapes are C, just kind of your standard C that you probably already know. Um, that's the shape starting at the fifth fret, or I'm sorry, the fifth string. These are uh, frets three, two, zero, one, and zero. Hopefully you know this one already. Um, the other one is F, which um, commonly is played like this. All right, so starting at the fourth string, these are frets three, two, one, and one, with a bar at one and one. In this song, you're actually gonna probably play it more like an F major seven, so you're just gonna lift up on that bar, so it's gonna be, uh, it's very similar, it's just now three, two, one, and zero. Gives you that F major seven sound. Um, so that's played in this tune, and there's also another version of the F that's played, uh, which is this one. So um, here, we're going to start on the fifth string, and these are frets three, three, two, one. All right? So we're playing these inside strings, strings five through two, frets three, three, two, and one. And you're going to start it with your third finger, your ring finger, and lay that down on that third fret. Then you're gonna take your pinky finger and lay that down on the next string above it at the third fret. And then you got two and one. So that's another version of the F chord right there. Um, you'll see both of these, that F major seven, and also this version of the F, both of those show, or will show up in this tune. Um, the last one is gonna be G, and I'm going through this because it's a little bit different than you're probably used to playing G. It starts with your third finger down here on the third uh, fret of the lowest string, the sixth string. And you'll take your pinky and put it on the third fret of the second string. So you've got this low G, you've also got this D note. Um, 
Also, I forgot to mention we're on capo three. So I'm saying G and D, that's what it means when we've got, th those are the notes when we have the capo on. Technically, those are not a G or a D, but don't worry about that. <laughs> um, so we can play our G chord like this. What I'm doing is muting the A string. Or if we want to get that B note in there, we could take our middle finger and drop that down, second fret of the A string right here, and that gives us our full G chord. All right. Um, the reason why we're doing this fingering instead of like your standard fingering like that is because now it leaves this first finger open to be doing some other cool stuff down here. So I'll get into that in a second. So anyway, we've got C, we've got that F major seven, We've got this other F chord, and we've got G. All right, so with all that in mind, we can start to look at this a little bit. Um, starting at just the first measure, the very beginning of the song. That's all just our C chord, and we're just pivoting on our middle finger on this E note. But everything else can just stay down. You don't have to, you can just grab that C chord and just keep it there and just move this second finger around. All right, so that gives us through the first measure and a half. And then we switch to this F. So you can move those two fingers and just get to that F chord. So the real reason we're using this kind of closed position F like this is because it makes transitions from the C to the F really smooth. It's kind of tricky to get if you've never done it before. Moving your second and fourth fingers in this way is might be a little awkward for you, but just practice it and it'll get smoother over time and you'll get this really nice, smooth transition. So you see that happen here in the second measure. Right here. And it happens again. So what I played through right there was the A part. Um, just one time through the A part, showing those transitions between the C and the F, that kind of closed position F. In the next section, in the B part, starting at measure nine, we get both that G shape and also that F major seven shape. So it starts with the G shape. And the reason we're using this uh, fingering like this is because that index finger, I mentioned that before, and that shows up here. Right there. And now we can move into this F major seven kind of deal. And then there's a little bit of um, like a linear line, but you can still hold this shape as you walk through it. So this linear line starts to measure 11. but you can still kind of keep that general F major seven shape. And then back to the G. All right, um, and that really is the gist of it. There's also this C part, but it's kind of more of the same. You have that C shape to this F major seven shape. Back to your C shape. All right, so um, I hope that works out well for you. Uh, it's uh, it's a really lovely tune, and using these shapes makes it a lot easier, in my opinion. It makes it just sound better. One of the reasons it sounds better is because you get more connectedness between notes, and you also have these uh, strings that continue to ring out as you. Uh, play through the tune. So the other thing I just wanted to mention here was letting strings ring out as long as they can. So open strings can ring, uh, continue to ring until you fret them again. Um, fretted notes can continue to ring out until you have another position shift. So just for example, let's just look at the first few measures again. Very beginning of the tune, starting to measure one. <laughs> So let's just, first as an example, let's just look at this high E string. This is the fourth um, note in the song. Right, we can let that, I'm just picking this one because it's an easy one to hear and you can hear 
continue to ring as I go through and play other things. You know, it's still kind of continuing to ring through all of that. Um, so the idea is that is just one note that can ring. Um, another one that might be ringing is the C note. This is the third note in the song. So the idea is it's ringing because I'm, it's a fretted note and I continue to hold that down throughout the passage. Uh, here, sorry. And that's the first time I lift up is on that B note. And that's in uh, halfway through measure three. So that's just an example of ways that you can allow these to ring. Um, so the key idea here is continue to hold down these chord shapes as long as you can. That's C, that F major seven, this closed shape F, this G. Keep those fretted notes down as long as you can. Keep those open strings ringing. Don't accidentally mute them or intentionally mute them, whatever. Um, that's the idea. That's gonna that's gonna be really the way to make this sound as good as you can make it sound. So as promised, I'm gonna go through this slower so you can hear it at a, at a slower speed. Um, if you have questions or comments, um, drop it below the video, or if you prefer, you can just email me directly, um, or you can send a note to Acoustic Guitar and they can relay the message to me as well. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching. Good luck with this, have fun, and here we go. I'm gonna slow it down, play it through, uh, a bunch slower here so you can really kind of focus in and see what's going on. Here it is.